The enemy means something for evil, but God can turn it around for good. Oh, first of all, you've got to look at Joseph's life. 13 years he had a promise, he had a goal, he had a dream in his heart. For 13 years it didn't come to pass. And yet God had a perfect time. And at that perfect time, the perfect will of God was consummated. So what I want to share with you is that scripture that Joseph said to his brothers when finally he saw the plan pan out. He said in Genesis 50 verse 20, but as for you, you meant it for evil, brothers, but God meant it for good in order to bring about as this day to save many people alive. Sometimes a delay in our life, maybe when we don't get the loan, maybe when we're caught in traffic, or maybe when we're understanding something and there's this delay and, and that that, that phone call doesn't come that you wanted to have, do you know what? Never, never give up. Because when you are in God's plan, you are submitted to God's plan, when you love God and you're called according to his purpose, everything can work together for your good. God has an advantage for you, and he wants to share this with you. He sees the big picture. He sees the big picture, and we can't always see that. He knows where the dead ends are. He knows where the shortcuts are. And he knows where the bumpy roads are. And so he's trying to get us to that place where it will be better for us, but we have to trust. When you are a mature person, you'll be able to pray this. And I've done this so many times, this, this prayer. Lord, I may not like it, but you know what's best for everyone involved in my situation. And God always takes into account all those people around you, your family, your friends, the people that you're working with. He takes those people into account, and he judges justly. In fact, I love this scripture, 1 Peter 2, verse 23 who when Jesus was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But what did he do? He committed himself to God the Father who judges justly and righteously. Have you ever thought about that? You know, we, not, we like to see God as a good God, and yes, he is. He is a good God. He's very good. But he's also a righteous judge, and he knows how to bring judgment into the situation correctly so that you can have the very best, highest good come to pass in your life. That's the wonderful thing about Jesus, is that some of the things in the future that he's doing, he's preparing you right now for something that's very beautiful. How many of you ever thought that that boss that's not very friendly to you may be the very person that God's using to polish you up a little bit? Maybe it's your husband or maybe it's your wife. <laughs> maybe that's the person that God's using to polish you up a little bit, giving you a better and stronger confidence in God so that you can walk through anything triumphantly. Now, the question is this. This is the question. Can you trust him and can you trust his leadership? Can you trust God when you don't have answers to your prayers right away? Paul said this. He was put in prison. And get what he said. This is Paul. This is the great apostle Paul. He said, I'm sitting here in prison now. And then he said, but this happened everything that's happened to me so far. I've been in prison here. It's all happened because of the furtherance of the gospel. That's right there. You can read it right there in the Bible. It's so powerful. I think it's in Philippians. Yeah, Philippians 1 verse 12. All these things happened to me for the furtherance of the gospel. But you know, we like to take a little piece of the puzzle and isolate that and look at it and, and really analyze that and say, I don't like this. 
This piece of the puzzle doesn't fit. I can't see where it fits in. But we have to wait because God's promised to fulfill his purpose for us. In fact, in Psalm 138, verse 8, it says this, The Lord will perfect everything that concerns you. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Do you know that every single church in the book of Revelation had to learn how to overcome something? And if they learned how to overcome, the Bible says that they would receive a blessing. And it's no different for us. We are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to learn how to overcome and it's not always easy. But recently, you know, I thought about something, that scripture that loomed out at me. It's so beautiful. It's in Psalm 30, verse 5. Weeping may endure for a night, but what comes in the morning? Joy. That's right. Joy comes in the morning. Now, we all recently celebrated Good Friday, but how about looking at that Good Friday in the way that Mother Mary looked at it at first? Do you think it was a good Friday for her? Do you think the disciples saw it as a good Friday? We call it good now because we can see the benefits of it. But what happened that day was more like a tragic Friday or a horrible Friday. But when Sunday was coming, God set up something precious. It was called a resurrection. And God is saying to some of you today, you're coming into your resurrection of new beginnings. This is a very strong word for you. You're coming into a resurrection because God has seen the times where you patiently waited and now God says, you can, God, you're going to be able to look back on that Friday and say, I see. I see the big picture. I understand, even Judas's betrayal. I thought about this. Judas, Judas's betrayal actually set up Jesus for his whole destiny. Amen. I heard a story once that really marveled me. It was about a young girl who was in a native village, and I never forgot it. She didn't want to be pregnant again. I guess she had been pregnant three or four times. She and her husband loved children, but they just didn't have enough money. And they were kind of like, oh, no, another one? And they were actually upset about it at first. They didn't know how they could pay for another one. They couldn't even pay for all of the other ones that they had, barely. But they said, well, thank God. They accepted it. But they found out later something very, very powerful happened. She had problems with her pregnancy. It was really hard. It was something where she had to go when she was about ready to go in for labor. She had to go in, and she had to go to a hospital in another village. And that was an inconvenience for her and the family. They all left, and they had to stay there for a little while. But when they came back, they realized that what was meant for evil, God turned around for good. And that, in that very village, it was ransacked by other natives, and every person in that village that they lived in was killed. They would have been killed too. God knows. Even that person that may be on your nerves today, that may bug you. God says, there's a reason. You just trust in the love of God in the midst of this and let God move you through it. Because, get this, if you're only happy, this is what I've learned, if I'm only happy when things go my way, then I'm very immature and I'll always be frustrated. Because number one, I've learned that God doesn't take orders very well. He sure doesn't. He doesn't control. He doesn't like to be controlled. He's the boss. He is the boss, and he doesn't like to be told what to do. So this is why we can trust that beautiful promise in the Bible that when the key of David is given to us, God will open the doors that no man can shut, and he will shut the doors that no man can open. 
and sometimes even your enemies do more to support you than your friends and you don't even know it. I have come into so many roadblocks throughout my ministry. Oh, so many. More than you could ever imagine. But what they did was cause me to learn how to pray, to know God better, to be more determined than ever before, to see his hand and understand him, and to be totally at, at ease in his presence and with what he's doing in my life. And the reason why is I've chosen this one main attitude, and I, I want you to embrace it too. You're not a victim. Never. You're never a victim. You're always a victor. Always. When you have that attitude, even your enemies don't control your destiny. Because you can trust yourself to the one who judges justly. When you see your resurrection is coming, I tell you the greatest compliment that you can ever give God is that you trust his leadership. It's the greatest compliment. I really, really want to share with you a few things here of my own personal life. I'm going to get into this right now because every single time I've seen the Lord move, it was in ways that didn't seem comfortable at first. I remember the time when Pastor Tom and I were starting off in ministry and we went into New York City and we traveled with a, a, a very wonderful ministry. They, they put us in a home, though. It was... It was quite rude of a home. Nice people lived in the home, but the home was so dirty. It was filled with cats and dogs and even birds that would fly through the air. I mean, they were like everywhere. <laughs> and we were supposed to stay there for two weeks. So the lady, who must have been a missionary, she put us in the back room in the back closet, sort of kind of like a screened in porch, but it was in October. And so in the midst of October, late October, it was cold out there and we were shivering and we put our, Pastor Tom and I on this little twin bed huddling together, putting the covers over our head to try to stay warm. And literally I caught a cold because it was so bad. It was so freezing. The funny part about it is that the lady, she was so nice to us, but she was just, the whole house was unclean. There were cats everywhere. And I would go to take a shower in the morning, and I would go into that shower that was the bathtub, and it was used as the cat litter box. And so before I went to, to take a shower, I had to clean the, the shower out and the bathtub out to make sure I could get a clean shower because there were cats that were in there that night before. So I did what I needed to do. We took showers. We did whatever we could. But the funniest part about this whole thing was in the midst of it, I didn't want to eat some of the things that, I, that she was set before me. And so it was really difficult for me because she brought us what I called cat hair lasagna one night. And seriously, it was a, a piece of lasagna that had little sprigs of hair that was sitting out of it. Looks, looks like it was, it was a, a relish or a garnish or something. And I looked, I looked at it and, oh God, oh God, you know, and, 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 and I, there were one, the one thing after another that happened that caused us delays and inconveniences. And so finally with, with this cold that I had, I said, God, I got to go sing at a con concert. And I said, God, unless you come through, this is going to be bad. And I, I didn't cancel and I, I couldn't sing at the time that I made that faith venture into the, into the uh, church. And so when I got into the church, everyone was singing worship and we were praising God. And then, little by little, I could feel my voice coming back. Little by little. When you step out in faith, you watch and see what God does. And every single, every single prayer that I prayed when I was up there, every single song that I sang, I sang by faith. And little by little, every note got eked out. Now, the funny part about it, though, was that that wasn't, that wasn't the main dish here. The main dish was this. At the very close of the service, 
the Holy Spirit gave me a couple words of knowledge. And the words of knowledge were this. There are some people in this room that want to commit suicide. And God wants you to come up to the front right now. He wants you to come up right here, and I'm going to pray for you because it's going to be over. You're going to be, you're going to be fine. And when I did, there were flocks of people that came up. And I thought, a few? This was, this was a lot of people. And so I prayed for all of them. And I thought to myself, after I was all done, what would have happened if I would have said, I can't sing tonight, I'll cancel the concert, let's try it a different night. What would have happened to all those people? My goodness. Every single one of those people, their lives were saved. Not only physically, but spiritually too. So God had intended something very, very, very good, but it inconvenienced me. A lot of times, God does things that will inconvenience us so that someone else could be helped. I like what Mom Wilkie used to always say. Mom Wilkie was a great lady of faith. She said, God's got a plan for your plan. And he does. God has a plan for our plan. He's entrusted us with situations of life. He's entrusted us with the beauty of the glory of the Lord. You know, I, I heard a testimony once that really, really just spoke to my heart. It was about a little boy by the name of Connor. Now, Connor had parents that were really, really beautiful, godly, beautiful parents. And they already had like two healthy children. But when Connor was born, he was disabled. And he had autism. And the parents cried out and they said this, God, I don't understand why my child was born like this. And all the father was told is this by the Lord, can you trust me? Can you trust me? And so they began to work with him. And pretty soon he began to learn things that most autistic people could never learn. And he was changed. He started to come out. He started to talk. Gradually, little by little, he started to become absolutely, you know, more like a normal person would be. But in the midst of all that education, what happened is this. Connor's dad started a beautiful ministry for children all over that had autism. And it was called this. And this is it's still in existence today. It's called Champion, the Champion Club. There are 30 of those all around the world. Champion Club for Autistic Children. And the parents started this ministry to help children. And guess what happened? Not only did their child get healed, but all the other children all over the world were helped because of their one situation. God can turn that which is evil around for good if we let him. The, the fact is, though, can we trust his leadership? Can we trust him? Many battles took place in our lives. Tom and I, I'll just share with you some interesting things. There's peace that comes to us when we can do this. And this is how peace came to Tom and I throughout situations of our life. In honesty and openness in prayer, when we divulge our honest prayers before God, we say, God, we ask you to take whatever we have and turn it around for good. Make our life a glory to you. And when you do that, when, when, when we did that, it became a different story. But not only that, I believe this. There's two areas that really begin to change our situations. It's number one, when we, be, we, we pray in honesty before God like that. But number two, when we actually know who we are, that we are a winner. We're born conquerors. We're victors in Christ. We're not victims. And that mindset has to be in us at all times, through every situation, because the enemy will always try to consume us with condemnation. That's his trap. 
you've done something wrong. You're not worth anything. You're not valuable. He'll come at us over and over and over again with those thoughts because that's his main way to steal, kill, and destroy us. And he will also destroy us by telling us that we're not a child of God. We're not worthy. That's his way. And when we combat that by knowing that we are a victor in Christ and that we are in Christ Jesus made to be more than a conqueror, all things can work together for good. Such as these things that happened to Tom and I. Many battles in our life took place for us to be here today as a family, all of us, as the family of God. Many battles we've gone through. Number one, before we were married, Pastor Tom was in a car accident. He actually was in a train wreck right before, before we were going to be married. He was in a train wreck. The car, his car, was turned, it was just totally demolished, except for the part where he was sitting. And that, in and of itself, was a miracle because when they saw the car, when most people saw that van, they looked at it and they said, is the, is, is the driver alive? And he came out without a scratch. He was, I think he may have had one little dent or something in his knee, but it was just nothing compared to what could have been. I mean, he could have been dead. That was a miracle. That was a miracle. And then... Before we moved to Milwaukee, right before we started this church, there was a thief that walked into our home. He was a thief, he was a robber, and he was an abuser and perhaps could have been even a murderer. But when I stepped out in faith, when he was walking through our house, rummaging through everything, I stepped out in faith and I walked into the living room and I said, in the name of Jesus, you get out of this house. That man moved out the window and left. That could have been tragic, not only for me, because I was alone in the house, but it could have been tragic for my husband if he would have lost me. I don't know what that man was intended to do. I know one thing, he was rummaging around my house taking stuff, but he didn't stay. Friday Fridays of our life, they don't stay, friends. They don't stay. They come and they go. But there's Sundays coming. And that's what we have to remember. In every situation, you are a victor. So, before we started the daycare, as I was moving into the, into the ministry, right before the daycare and some of the adventures that we were doing in the ministry at the time, I was driving in, and a man darted out in front of me, and the, the car that I was in, without a safety belt on, it was two, I think, like, just a couple, a couple blocks or something away from our house. I intended to put it on, but I never did. He bashed right into me. My car flipped over, and I was on top of my head with this, what appeared to be like this bubble all around me. I was like in a bubble wrap. And I moved out of the car, and when I looked at the car after it was done, there was glass everywhere. Bibles were all over the place. And I had eked through that window without a scratch. And I had the ability, because of the grace of God, to minister to that 16-year-old who bollocked into the car, who was frantic, and he was so nervous because he knew that he just got his license and this could actually wreck his record. And so he was so concerned. And so I was able to go over him and pray for him. That was a miracle. That was how God worked together something that appeared to be evil and turned it around for good and gave me a brand new car that I really needed anyway. It doesn't make sense. Sometimes things just don't make sense in our life. No giant is too big for God to defeat. And so today, I want to make sure that we understand that God says, in everything, give him thanks, for this is the will of the Lord. 
because he can arrange a Sunday for you in the middle of your Friday. If you just lift up your hands right now, I just want you to say in your heart of hearts, I lift up my hands, Lord, and in the midst of my terrible, terrible Friday, I am going to trust in your leadership. I am going to thank you that what was meant for evil against me, God, God, you are going to turn around for good, that the steps of a good man are ordered by you, and you will direct my steps.